right, guys, let's uh, move on. We got another case to go. Case C. So Case C says, when I was five, I had a triangle-shaped scar appear on my right knee. I included a photo of the scar as it looks like now. At the time, I've also had what looked like vertical cut marks in between the knuckles on my hand that appeared out of nowhere. Yes, this past year it seemed to be very important to make me understand that the encounters were real. Now, before 2017, everything was either dreamlike or flashbacks. I never saw the beings in the flesh or saw any UFOs. Then, starting last spring, it all changed. I started to feel a hand on my thigh or a hand cupping the back of my head and placing it down. One time I even felt a being trying to kiss me. Maybe that girl I saw in the mall I already told you about, but I'm not really sure about that. Then one night before I had fallen asleep, I saw a neon blue projection of three small beings. Their heads were bobbing up and down and they were shooting blue beams of light out of their eyes into mine. The next night I saw another neon blue projection of a single small being. I said to it in my head, hello, and it waved at me. Then it stepped aside and it was showing me a rounded control panel. Now beyond the control panel was a screen on the wall. Then the projection ended. Again, I was awake trying to go to sleep, laying on my right side. Here's um, the image uh, of the scar that he's claiming. Uh, I want to show you guys this real quick. And he claimed that he's had the scar since he was a kid, right? And he actually drew us a picture of that uh, female alien being that had uh, put his head down, but at one time he apparently thought she had kissed him. And uh, let me see if I can find that for you guys. Here, there it is. That, yeah, that's creepy, man. Um, I've seen um, a lot of, I've heard a lot of cases of these hybridized uh, humans and aliens. Now, out of the four abductees, he's probably the only one who has uh, experience with a hybrid, so to speak. But hybrids is a very common experience for everybody who's familiar with alien abductions. A lot of these abductees do come across uh, hybrid beings. So it's spectacular uh, accounts. Um, once again, thank you for sharing uh, this great information. Okay, guys, we have one more addition that was added right after the video was previewed to the abductees and I was asking them for any kind of comments or feedbacks. And one of them wanted me to go more in detail with his drawing of the alien. Mostly because after sharing uh, all the UFO stories and all the abductee stories, this particular abductee had explained to me that the previous descriptions of the gray entities seemed to have matched his description of, of, of the girl that he saw and he wanted me to go more in depth about the actual description that he had written earlier, which I initially deleted. So let's take a look at this uh, description that he says of this alien being. So he writes here, her skin was pure white, like milky or egg white. Her eyes were clear white with a small black pupil that was quickly darting back and forth as she was looking me over from my feet to my head. The eyes were different from what I remember from the flashbacks I had in the 90s. In those, the female had solid black eyes. She was wearing a single piece black jumpsuit, but around her waist, she had a very shiny metallic silver or platinum cloth that dipped at her stomach forming a V shape. I also noticed that she had a rounding of her hips with the neat appearance of her hair. I felt that was important. So yeah, so he kind of wanted to uh, share the idea that this uh, drawing of this alien, that her clothes might actually match something close to this little white alien over here that we have, especially after the uh, previous abductee described the grays as possibly having white skin, but being perceived in the dark. So I thought that was a very, very important detail to add to this and, and also I just wanted to quickly add regarding this thing about the solid black eyes uh, and having that uh, different vision from your flashback to a dream. Now if you read uh, Philip uh, Corso, I, I believe he actually talked about how the black eyes is more of a technological thing, kind of like sunglasses that helps with the, sensit the sensitivity of the eyes. So it's very possible that in one flashback or dream this abductee was seeing what would be equivalent to sunglasses. In another, uh, it was just seeing the eyes directly as they are naturally. All right, guys, thank you for uh, sticking with me through this update. And back to the episode. My whole life, I've dealt with this phenomenon. 
Oddly enough, I've never encountered an alien, well, at least that I can remember. Bright flashes of light with missing time, being pulled through walls in a state of sleep, put back, seeing others around me in a state of sleep, men in blacks, seeing UFOs, showing people UFOs, and pretty much everything else but the actual aliens. Whatever part you'd like to know, I'll happily ramble about. I mean, I have no other outlet for this and I've gotten 43 years of experiences. I've had shared physical experiences with unwilling participants around me. These days I'm watching my children go through it. Yes, it is bloodline. I'm colorblind, but I can see like an owl at night. And during the day, I liken it to seeing into a higher spectrum. Like I, I can see crafts and sometimes I can point them out and others can see them. But they're there every day not following me or anything, just in different parts of the sky, especially around cities. Like if I go near Charlotte, North Carolina, they're just there. I've seen a few saucers, but mostly the whites and sometimes gold balls, maybe like eight feet around. It's kind of hard to tell the size. Now, occasionally I'll see odd shapes and, and they know when you look because they react by moving or just poof, gone. Maybe five or so hours into the day, I'll get an intense headache and right behind my right ear on my neck, just below my hairline, I'll have a small circular bump with a dot in the center, like I was stuck with a needle. The pain originates from this area. But what I can't tell you is whether the phenomenon is man-made, alien, religious, or whatever, it's way more advanced than us. These objects I see, they seem to operate at a higher frame rate. To see something in the sky or even at a hundred yards away and it to know exactly that moment that your eyes sees it is mind blowing for me. So uh, this uh, Case D, he also wanted to ask if anybody else was reporting feeling other people's emotions just by being near them, especially sadness. And then he also apparently has allergies to like things like rusted metal. And he wanted to see if other uh, abductees also had this. So, um, you know, for all the other abductees, if you guys have these type of symptoms, please, um, you know, just, just let me know or, or I can give his contact or you guys can talk to each other. But he's very curious about other people's experiences as well. And of course, he did provide us uh, an image. And uh, so I wanted to show you this real quick. He um, claims that this uh, photo, I guess it's taken with like a cell phone or something. It's the fidelity is not great, but there is some kind of weird anomalous objects over here. And look, I work as a photography manager and I can tell you that this is not a camera artifact. And if you put in the uh, channel uh, mixer, uh, you can see it a little more clearly. I'm going to see if I can increase the levels just so you can uh, get a clear image of the object. But there it is, guys. I mean, I for one, I, I, I believe this guy. I mean, I think there's nothing about his story that makes me think he's lying. And, and this image is definitely showing something anomalous. Like almost every other image that all the other abductees showed. So, look, I have to tell you guys, I was absolutely blown away by the stories, by, by the um, level of evidence that these people were giving. I mean, I thought, okay, maybe I'll get a couple of UFOs here, a couple of UFOs there, but then you know, to get these in, the pictures of the implants, to get the actual drawing of the aliens. I mean, the, those airplanes the, without windows. I've never seen that before in my entire life. So to me, this is all like mind blowing. So having gone through those accounts, I wanted to ask, is it possible that these people are lying and that all this evidence is just all photoshopped? The answer is yes, but highly unlikely that these people could create accounts that could all be so specific and at the same time overlap with one another. But you see, that's not the most important question for me. See, the question is, it's not whether it's possible to lie, but are they lying? See, given the number of correspondence, the amount of time that these individuals put in the emails, the lack of motive to obtain anything, uh, since everything is just being said anonymously, these people have nothing to gain with these emails. And because I see no motive other than wanting to tell the truth, I'm personally inclined to believe that these accounts may actually be legitimately truthful. But what really convinced me were the overlaps in the accounts themselves, especially the ones that I couldn't predict. For example, A says, perhaps in some implanted memory, 
but I could fly over any section of it by simply wishing it. I felt such joy and ecstasy, complete happiness. Okay, then D, unbeknownst to A, says, But what I can tell you is whether the phenomenon is man-made, alien, religious, or whatever, it's way more advanced than us. These objects I see, they seem to operate at a higher frame rate. So we have two abductees essentially claiming that these visions or these uh, things that they're looking at kind of operates at this like higher level, at, at, like this higher clarity. Okay, another one. A says, when I looked directly in their eyes, the most profound sadness and shame flooded me. Well, D later was asking, does anybody report feeling other people's emotions just by being near them, especially sadness? So uh, this is another similarity that these uh, abductees seem to feel emotions without expressing them um, verbally. Uh, C says, I've also had what looks like vertical cut marks in between my knuckles on my hands that appeared out of nowhere. Well, B just gave us a whole bunch of pictures of these little scars that was right between the knuckle. Another similarity, B says, I thought I was going to die. My heart was beating so hard in my chest and I was looking for a way to tell myself that I was dreaming so that I could take control of the situation. And it only said, stay calm, stay calm, stay calm. Three times, pausing in between. Okay, now A says, it felt like a rod was inserted in my spinal column. I felt every second of it. I couldn't see anything, they, they wouldn't allow it. They would subject me to the cycles of pain and happiness. Sometimes two cycles of pain in the night. I cried and screamed, but no one could possibly hear. And then, of course, B says, It had me paralyzed, and I couldn't move as it pushed a rich tank-like tube on my right nostril. The pain was unreal, and I tried to move my head back away, but couldn't move. D says, Maybe five hours or so into my day, I'll get in this intense headache, and right behind my right ear on my neck, just below my hairline, I'll have a small circular bump with a dot in the center, like I was stuck with a needle. The pain originated from the area. Now, I hypothesized that I'm being injected, to make me feel good, then it wears off. Guys, this is exactly what A said about the injections. Okay, well, commonalities also include being abducted since the age of five, seeing UFOs in association with abductions, being able to control certain crafts with their minds, thinking that the aliens are flashbacks at first, but then being allowed, quote unquote, to see, to see them, being injected with materials to make them feel better uh, during the procedures, having very painful procedures, being shown high fidelity projections, being told about the environment being destroyed, uh, being told about asteroid strikes, having other strange events occurring like abductions, men in black, strange planes, strange scars in similar locations, a female alien being doing procedures that is separate from the other aliens. I mean, come on guys, let me tell you something. I can pretend that this could all be made up, but the truth is you can't make this shit up let alone have all these correlations and overlaps of stories from different accounts. So, the bigger question then becomes, what is really happening to these people? What do the aliens want? And what is their agenda? Look, I have a theory, but I'm gonna wait till the next episode because this is really just about the case studies of the actual abductees. And uh, given that they, these abductees have the first-hand experience, I wanted to ask them personally, what do you guys think the alien agenda is? Either way, I can say it's safe to conclude that the ones doing the experiments, they're not gonna be giving away their secrets. So this question is its gonna to have to be looked at in an investigative way. So for all the UFO researchers out there, please comment below and give us your take as to what you think is happening with this alien agenda. Now to end this segment, I wanted to leave you guys with a passage from Abductee A. I had a very vivid dream, or, or a type of downloaded message. In this dream, I was walking to the convenience store. It was humid and, and overcast, dark clouds. For whatever reason, I noticed a duck walking several feet in front of me. And I thought, yeah, sure, you know, I'll follow it, see what kind of species it is. I rounded a building with a large pond behind it. 30 feet in the air was a very large saucer type craft. I wasn't surprised. I could hear this low hum, this very distinct, and feel the ionizing energy flux in the skin of my arms. It felt so real, and in my head, I see it clearly still. Above it, ducks and geeses of all kinds just flying in the same direction. And then I heard a voice in my head. 
When you see the waterfowl flying like streams, follow them to safety. You may tell your friends. Then the craft quickly shot up and vanished. So guys, make sure to tell your friends. And also, uh, regarding this remote viewing session, we do have a new envelope. Um, uh, I just, I get this feeling that given uh, how deep this episode is, that people are going to be more concerned about the alien agenda than what's inside this envelope. But if you guys do want to play, uh, just make sure you put RV colon and your predictions for the next episode. Uh, for those who are new uh, to the episode, I will be leaving a subscription a button above. And uh, once again, uh, thanks for joining me, guys. This is Felipe Osorio, signing out.